Hello. Uh, today we're going to be talking about dynamic arrays and for loops. Um, Alright, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to be doing input and output to the screen. Don't forget you're using namespace. Alright, we're going to start off with um, a pointer to an integer. Now we haven't really talked about pointers, but pointers are... Uh, it literally points to a place in memory where that that um, array or variable or object or whatever it is. So <clears throat> instead of actually being the variable, it just points to the variable. So we could set this um, this pointer equal to the location of this if we wanted to. Um, but we're we're creating an empty uh, integer point pointer uh, called ages, and then we're calling it, like, creating another integer named the number of people, because guess what it's going to hold? That's right, you guessed it. We're going to ask how many people, uh, how many people's ages do we want to remember? Does the user want us to remember? And we get that number, and then we set that pointer to an integer, ages, equal to a new integer and then we use the brackets like we did for a normal array, except this time in there we're going to use that number that we got from the user. So what this is going to do, it's going to set up um, a new uh, pointer and to this... It, it, it allots um, this many integers, the, the space in memory for this many integers, and sets that as a new pointer, for, and then sets that equal, uh, this age is equal to that point. So it, it allots all of that memory for us, um, takes care of all of that dirty work messing with the, the memory, which you used to have to do with um, C. This is, this is only in C++, you guys, sorry. Um, but I like C++, and I'm hoping you're starting to see why I like C++. Alright, so now that we've set up our dynamic array with uh, with the amount of people uh, that it needs to hold, um, initialized it, um, we have a for loop. Now, the for loop uh, is a really interesting uh, little structure. Um, you do for and then inside the parentheses, you have three sections. You have this section right here that runs once at the very beginning. This section right here, which is the conditional that it checks each t time before it goes through again. And then this section, which it executes at the end of each run. So we create an integer named i, set it equal to zero. And then while i is less than the number of people, so it will never get above the, n the number. Now if you recall, we count from zero up, so this is going to make sure, like say we got four people in, that it's not going to go over four, it's not going to be equal to four, it's not going to run equal to four, so we're not going to go outside of our bounds. Um, the highest it will ever go is three, which, you know, zero, one, two, three, that's four people. Um, then at the end of this of, of this code block, it's going to um, increment. That's what that plus plus means. Increment the or add one to i. So at the end of this loop, the first time it'll set it equal to one, and then after the second time it'll set it equal to two. So each time each time we go through this for loop, it's going to run what's in the brackets. Um, or alternatively, if you only have one line, which we only have one line down here, you don't have to put the brackets. Just like the if statement. Uh, so we're going to say, please give me the age of the person, uh, of person number, and notice we add one, since we are talking to a user, makes it a little easier for them to understand which, which person we're talking about. So in other words, the first person will not be zero, it'll be one, because we add one. Um, and then we access the correct age, and they set that age equal to whatever, and we set that age equal to whatever input we get from the user. 
then we tell the user, okay, well, this is the ages we got. And then we do another for loop that just goes through all of the all of the slots in our array again and just outputs the um, each age that's been stored in each one of those slots. And we return. Let's compile. No errors. Build. No errors. Execute. Alright, so how many people do you want me to remember? I'm gonna say five. And just put arbitrary numbers in here. So if you notice, we've got five integers, and each one is stored exactly how it needs to be. Um, <coughs> let's try it again, just with a different number, just so you guys see that it is in fact dynamic. This time we'll go with a little bit lower, we'll do two, two people. And we'll say 24 and 23. There you go. So. Now you guys see how to do dynamic arrays and for loops. Um, just keep in mind that you got to be really careful with this conditional because if you go outside of um, this allotted this allotted space, you will get a really nasty seg fault or crash in your program. It will crash your program. So you have to be really careful with both arrays and dynamic arrays not to go outside of its bounds. Um, which is why we set it up like this, to make sure it doesn't ever go outside. Alright, um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to ask questions, leave comments, and um, see you guys next time.